Framingham elected two councillors at large from a final pool of four candidates. Cheryl Tully Stoll, current chair of the Board of Selectmen, was the top vote getter in the general and preliminary elections for one of the two at large seats. So now she continues her work for Framingham, but in this totally new capacity. Cheryl, it's the day after the election. How are you feeling about the whole experience and where you are today? Uh, I feel really good about the whole experience. I there were things that, you know, that happen in, in, in a lot of elections and things tend to get very tense and, and people kind of go at it a little bit. But overall, we had more people in Framingham come out, become engaged for the first time, you know, young, bright, new faces who are the future of Framingham. Mm -hmm. I think, that, you know, the overall takeaway that I have from the campaign, aside from being exhausted, uh, is this new energy we have and the new life we have for our new city. So I, I think it, it really w it went very well. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling good about the, obviously good about the results, but glad the campaign is over? I am thrilled. Yeah. Um, I started running a year ago, October, for re-election to the Board of Selectmen and became a lame duck because the charter passed the night I got re-elected. So I never stopped. So I am now finally stopped. And you only get, though, two years, right, in the first term? First term, we only get two years. Don't remind me. I know. I know. So you have to really kick it into gear probably in about a year and a half. You, yeah. You, yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if Framingham is, is moving forward and doing what we all expect it to do, it's, it's not going to be that big a deal because it won't be, you know, being chairman of the Board of Selectmen, being chairman of the Board of Selectmen who's responsible for the transition and running a campaign. It'll be running for re-election to the office I'm currently sitting in. So right, it's much right. more of a focus. That's enormous. When, it, when you list it out like that, I just can't even imagine what kind of pressure and demands that put on your time. It, it's been brutal. I haven't had a day off. This is the transition period leading up to January when everything yeah. kicks in. On January 15th, the new licensing commission has to be seated, which means we will have had to work out a way with the mayor um, that the mayor will advertise or select candidates in, in any way she wants to and we will have had need to have had some advanced chance to vet them somewhat so that we can kind of narrow down between the group uh, and the mayor what that council who's going to sit on that council because all of our licenses for the year get renewed in December by the Board of Selectmen and the ideal situation is that that new licensing board gets to participate in that so they're not starting with no background. So I'm wondering, are you all going to get together and kind of go over everything that has to happen and when? Is that what you're saying is part of that transition document? Part, yes. Okay. That, well, that document is just a memo on particular things. Mm -hmm. Bob Halpin has put together a book on a lot of different things that are ongoing that he will go over with the mayor. We as a board have, that's the one thing that we will directly be passing off that won't be seamlessly picked up by the mayor's new responsibilities or be a city council responsibility. So, the, and because it's so time sensitive, if we, if, if those people aren't seated on December 15th, excuse me, January 15th, we have businesses that will be waiting to open who are paying rent. So that was very pointed out and spelled out in, in the document. Um, for that date. They were mm -hmm. very particular about making sure that that happens. So there also has to be recruitment because you have to fill those slots and then those people have to be trained if they're not already doing this. Correct. And then they have to be ready to start issuing licenses by January 15th. Yes. And we do um, have a very good licensing administrator who can guide people through the process. Uh, recruitment, um, Jeanette Galliard, our administrative assistant, and I have worked uh, the past year and a half uh, on better outreach for recruitment for all kinds of boards and committees. And we have had an abundance of, of wealth in the people who have applied, which in the past we hadn't. So at least that's a starting point. You mean point. more people are applying? More people are applying for, for different boards and commissions. I mean, really top-notch qualified people. Excellent. Uh, that we've never seen before, which is great. I think this whole process got people thinking about becoming involved. Right. That was one of the reasons why people said it was time for change. Yeah. Bring in some new blood. Bring in some new blood. And we, we were seeing that in the, in the application process for boards and commissions. And, you know, certainly that process would be available for the mayor. And, you know, my recommendation would be to, to even broaden that because that's been a learning process. 
and you know whatever we can do, whatever we've learned from all of our neighborhood activities during these, this citywide campaign, that would be a great way to go out to different neighborhood groups or neighborhood lists and just add the, you know, I would just suggest advertising as broadly as possible and then have that same embarrassment of riches. You have more authority than you had, obviously, as a legislative branch than a policy-making branch of government. Yeah, we do. So um, how do you feel about that? Like, what, what excites you about that? Um, it's not having more authority that excites me. What, what excites me is we've got more people involved. And we have a, a, a process now that is going to be cleaner than, than what we've had before. And hopefully, it, with a cleaner process, we're able to provide better services and make changes you know, much qu more quickly. When you know, we do, if we get an insurance settlement, we can't even deposit it into the bank until town meeting accepts it. So we have to then go through the, the scheduling or wait till the next town meeting, which is 60 days away. So that kind of stuff is going to you know, just, it'll be seamless. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things that, you know, our processes and procedures, I would assume that the new, new mayor is going to come in and, and start looking at ways to, you know, take what we're doing and get it up, get it up a level. Um, I mean, we've been doing that on certain areas, but, you know, we're a huge municipality. Mm -hmm. So um, in your new role, so you're going from chair of the Board of Selectmen to a city council at-large seat. Can you talk a little bit about how you see the at-large versus the district uh, councilor? You know, what does it mean to you to have that title as opposed to being a district councilor? Uh, I well, it gives me the opportunity to continue working on the projects that I've been working on, the downtown re revitalization and, and getting better processes for our business community. And, you know, I worked very closely with the school department this year. Uh, so that, uh, you know, my focus has been broad and it allows me to continue to, to, to advocate for those kinds of things. Uh, the district councilors, I would, I would think, should be, you know, the first point of contact for their constituents for neighborhood issues and for, you know, things in the district. And I would certainly encourage people to go to their, their district councilor first. I mean, it's easier to go to somebody you already know, but, you know, We've got some great new people who came on, and you know, get to know them and, and give them a chance to represent you. Because mm -hmm. I think we'll, I think it'll work out really well. Mm -hmm. And what do you think feel about uh, the the dynamics of the group that has just been elected? I think the dynamics of the group will, will probably be pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some some seasoned people who have you know either been a selectman or um, have have done some other things, and then we've got some other folks who really haven't sat in, in that kind of uh, responsible government seat before. And you know, looking at who got elected, I think everybody's willing to you know help folks and and guide them. I mean, we I, I think a lot of us you know help folks you know just navigate how to you know get campaign stuff. You know, where do you get the literature? Right, right, right. Um, and what do you think um, you want to accomplish sooner rather than later in this new form of government that maybe you haven't felt was doable? It's been very difficult to drill down into some of the budget areas um, that need to be evaluated. And like what? Can you name a couple? Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to go after sp specific areas right now. Uh, but there are particular places where you know you have you know, questions will arise and by the time you you find out about the question you you you're, you're partially through the budget season in some cases. And I think this, this, this form of government will give us the opportunity to A, have more transparency because everyone's committed to that. Uh, but also because the authority is now sitting you know, with the mayor and then just a approval with the council, it's, it would be an easier process because you don't have you know, 256 people who have to be included in the process. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will you know, allow some more streamlining. Uh, Framingham, uh, we have a pretty good revenue stream right now, um, but our spending is, is unsustainable if you look at the charts that the CFO has been, been doing. And this is while the economy is good. Right. And with the economy good, our um, aid from the state came in at $980,000 less than we thought it would after we had already prepared the budget this year. So we really need to get on the money piece, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, regardless of, of what people's priorities are. And I think that's also going to be part of it. I think you know, certain counselors are going to have certain departments that, that they may be more interested in looking at. And I think everything should be looked at. I think yeah. you know, the, we have a chance here now 
to set hit the reset button, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, we've got great municipal employees, and we also have an opportunity with about 50% of our workforce scheduled or eligible for retirement in the next five to six years. Yeah, that's a big a big uh, opportunity for change, and it's also a big problem. Well, it's a, it's a big problem in one respect is we're losing talent, right? But it's also an opportunity for us to streamline things, you know, and do it in a way where we don't have to lay people off, right? right. And do it in a planned way. From you know, let's start at fifty thousand feet. What do we want municipal services to look like, right? Um, do we want to keep the same level of service? Okay, great. If that's the case, how are we going to deliver so them? So a whole new perspective, it sounds like, is, is something that you're really looking forward to. Yeah, I am. That's great. And with, with the background that you bring to the table, I, I, it sounds like you feel good about being in that role and, and have a lot of ideas about where you want to go. So thank you for sharing all that. I appreciate oh, it very Thanks for the much. invitation. Thanks to Cheryl tolley Stoll for sharing her thoughts. Next up is one other council at large elected, uh, George King. And we will be right back.